Hello everyone, my name is Marie Grosjean and I am a data administrator at the GBIF Secretariat. Today I will introduce you to our registry of scientific collections, also called GRCycle. GRCycle is a community created clearinghouse of collection information across several scientific disciplines, not just natural history. It includes data about physical collections such as what they contain, where they are located, who can tell you more about these collections and how to get in touch with them, as well as their institutions and associated staff members. GeoCycle was originally developed by the Consortium of the Barcode of Life and lived at the Smithsonian Institution until GBIF inherited it in 2018. You can find more information on this news item. In 2020, our developers designed and set up a system to link specimen-related occurrences published on GBIF to GRCycle entries whenever possible. This means that institutions can aggregate metrics for their digitized specimens, regardless of how they were published on GBIF. One dataset can correspond to several collections, and several datasets can contribute to the same collection. Today, more than 100 million specimen-related occurrences have been linked to GRCycle entries. So here is how the occurrence linking works. Every GRCycle entry is associated with an institution or collection code and an institution or collection identifier. Most occurrences published on GBIF have a collection and an institution code, and sometimes a collection and institution identifier as well. When the new occurrence is published, our interpretation pipeline uses our GRCycle lookup service to check its institution and collection codes and identifiers, and it tries to find a match in GRCycle. Whenever there is more than one candidate, our system uses the country to choose a match. If the system isn't able to find a match, or if the match found is solely based on codes, the specimen-related occurrence is flagged by the system. Please check our blog post on the topic if you would like to know more. As I just mentioned, linking occurrences to GRCycle entries is made possible by our GRCycle lookup service. This service is described in our registry API documentation, and anyone can use it to check institution and collection codes and identifiers in GRCycle. But the lookup service isn't the only GRCycle API function available to the community. The GRCycle API, called Collections API in our documentation, provides a number of functions to search, access, and edit the GRCycle information. You can also export the result of your search as a tab-separated table. In fact, the API allows you to do the same things you can do with the web UI and more. You can find more information in our documentation. Anyone can use GRCycle to search for collections based on their attributes such as country, content type, or preservation type, as well as their codes and identifiers. You can then find more information about those collections and their institutions, and a way to get in touch with the people who work there. Institutions can use GRCycle to be more visible and discoverable. It is a way for them to showcase their collections, including undigitized ones. We hope GRCycle can open up opportunities for collaboration and support. National organizations such as GBIF nodes can use GRCycle to get an overview of the institutions and collections available in their countries. This information, combined with the digitized data made available on GBIF, can help guide some of the data mobilization effort by the community. As I mentioned before, each GRCycle entry is associated with a code and identifier. Although the institution and collection codes aren't always unique in GRCycle, GRCycle is the closest thing we have to a reference database for those codes and identifiers. By making them available via our lookup service, 
We hope to improve database interoperability and enable links with other systems. We updated the GeoCycle permission model to facilitate community creation. There are two ways that people can contribute to GeoCycle. They can either make change suggestions via our suggested change button and interface. This doesn't require any login and anyone can do it. You just need to fill the form presented and submit it with a comment about yourself and your email address. You can suggest to update the content of a page or create a new entry or merge duplicates or turn an institution into a collection. The suggestion will then be forwarded to the relevant people for review. The other way to contribute to GeoCycle is to become an editor or mediator. Editors and mediators can directly make changes to GeoCycle and can also review and apply suggestions concerning the entries included in their permission scope. Both of them can edit entries, but only mediators can merge and delete entries. Both mediators and editors can be given permission to work at the collection, institution, or national level. In practice, institutions ask to become editors to maintain their institution and collection entries, while some GBIF node managers became mediators to maintain, review, and apply the suggestions for the institutions and collections in their countries. We know that maintaining information across several data repositories can be challenging for institutions. This is why we would like to synchronize GeoCycle with as many reliable sources as possible. We worked with Index Herbarium to set up weekly synchronization with their system. So Herbaria can maintain their entries directly in the Index Herbarium and the changes will be visible in GeoCycle automatically. We want to continue exploring synchronizations with other sources. Currently, we are working on enabling synchronization with dataset metadata published on GBIF. The idea is that if a dataset corresponds to a collection, you will be able to choose it as a source of information and only maintain the information in your IPT or wherever you maintain the data published on GBIF. In addition to that, we worked with IDIGBIO to import their collection information in GeoCycle. The data are now maintained in the GBIF registry and displayed on the IDIGBIO portal via the Collections API. The IDIGBIO data managers are now part of our team of editors and mediators and contribute a lot to maintaining the information for the US. We are now reaching out to the community to increase our pool of editors and mediators. This year, we have been involving several GBIF node managers in the creation of GeoCycle. We are also planning to involve applicants for the GBIF managed funding programs, such as BID, the Biodiversity Information for Development, and BIFA, the Biodiversity Information Fund for Asia. We work with external collaborators, such as the Biodiversity Crisis Response Committee from Spinach to reach outside of the GBIF community. There are many ways you can help us improve GeoCycle. Anyone can check their institution and collection entries and suggest updates or additions via the suggest buttons in the GeoCycle interface. If you publish specimen occurrences on GBIF, please link them to GeoCycle entries if possible. You can become a registry editor on behalf of your institution or collection. If you work with the National Registry and are interested in sharing the data on GeoCycle, please contact us on the email address below. Tell us how you would like to use the registry in GeoCycle. You can contact us by email or via our GitHub repository. You can become a volunteer translator to make GeoCycle forms accessible in more languages. And finally, you can follow our roadmap and log your feedback and ideas in the GBIF feedback system or directly in our GitHub repository. Thank you very much for the opportunity to give this talk. I hope you enjoyed it and I am happy to answer any question. Have a nice day.